people are traveling to see family. They're hoping to get together for the holidays for New Year's Eve. And so why aren't we there right now with testing? Right. You know, testing has always been an, an issue, Caitlin, that has been problematic. It has been compounded by the situation of the high demands. We had a conflation of high demands, high demands because of the concern about Omicron, which is a justifiable concern, but the high demand that was triggered by the holiday season, people getting ready to travel, getting ready to go and mix with family members and friends. It's been a very, very strong run on testing and, and you know obviously not making any excuses for it we should have had more tests available but hopefully now as we get into the first couple of weeks in january that'll get much better i do want to ask you about a treatment as well that the fda authorized last week the first pill for covid 19 which is a very highly effective defense against severe illness which is obviously great news but the white house says that there's only going to be 265 treatment courses of pfizer available next month so how long do you think it's going to take until that pill is widely available to everyone in the united states well we have an order and a commitment for 10 million treatment courses that unfortunately caitlin is going to take a few months before we get to that number and the reason is that the synthetic process of making this is very complicated and a multi-step process that it is very difficult to cut down on the time frame of getting high quantities we are going to do everything we can including the defense production act to try and see if we can actually get this at a high level we're not sure what we can do and how much time we can cut off on that, but certainly it needs to be done because it is a highly, highly effective therapy. 90% protection from progression to hospitalizations and death. Yeah, and the Defense Production Act that you mentioned there is where the government can compel private companies to help them ramp up production of something like that. I, I do wonder, we are approaching New Year's Eve at the end of this week. A lot of people have got uh, events and gatherings planned. And I know you said it's okay to be with friends and family if you're vaccinated and boosted, but what is your advice to people about larger settings for New Year's parties? Uh, Caitlin, I would stay away from that. I mean, I, I have been telling people consistently that if you're vaccinated and boosted and you have a family setting in the home with family and relatives, but when you're talking about a New Year's Eve party, we have 30, 40, 50 people celebrating. You do not know the status of their vaccination. I would recommend strongly stay away from that this year. There will be other years to do that, but not this year. Not this year. That's good. Good information. I do have one more question for you. You are an advisor to President Biden now. Of course, you previously uh, were an advisor when it came to President Trump when he was in office in the beginning of this pandemic. And you've seen surely by now this exchange that he had with Candace Owens, where he is talking about just the truth on vaccines and boosters and how it can keep people out of the hospital and uh, from dying, of course. And I'm wondering what you made of that, given it's been this right wing backlash ever since the former president made those comments. Well, I mean, I'm glad that the president, uh, the former president uh, Trump is now talking about why it's important to get vaccinated. I was stunned by the fact that he's doing that and he's getting booed in some places for doing that, which means that, you know, poisoning the well early on about either not being enthusiastic or outright not pushing vaccines and discouraging vaccines now has a lingering effect. And even when you come out and say, go get vaccinated, some of the people that have been following his every word and what he does are now pushing back and not listening, which is really tells you the strength of the divisiveness in our society, which I've always said to me is the biggest stumbling block about getting this uh, pandemic under control. It really is no place for divisiveness politically when you have a classical, historical, unprecedented pandemic. I mean, it just doesn't make any sense. Millions of Americans still unvaccinated this morning. Dr. Anthony Fauci, thank you though for joining us. Good to be with you, Caitlin. Thank you for having me.